Good morning, everyone. Good morning, girls and guys, guys and girls. Hi, hello. My name is EJ, and I am here with the very last video that I am planning and posting for the year 2021. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. I know it's right around the corner, and I know that I plan for two more videos, two extra videos to come out on December. Uh, compared to my normal monthly scheduled post of two uh so yeah four for december and here it is the fourth one uh i finally posted it uh, it should be december 28th is when i post this obviously i'm recording this way ahead of time and so yeah merry christmas happy holidays uh one last time before i sign off with this video so yeah uh this one is one of my favorite recorded time lapse that i did last year uh 2020 it is one of the more original ideas i've come up with too i've been operating on a prompt basis all for the most part actually since 2018 um and what i mean by that is that a lot of the artwork i've been creating have been from prompts typically from daily spit paint it used to be from the daily sketch sketch group and way back in conceptart.org um they post daily prompts and i used to do those a lot and that's how my daily practice got started um i would do a warm-up post uh or a warm-up artwork based on a prompt that i would get from online and so i it started from the daily sketch group in conceptart.org then obviously it migrated towards the daily spit paint group on facebook when conceptart.org kind of crashed and so, yeah, a lot of the speed paints I've been doing have been based off of typically from those prompts. I do get prompts from other places too. Uh, Sketchzone.net, um, this Discord group that I'm part of, is one of the other places I get my prompts from as well. Um, there's also the Creative Forum, the Creative Artists Forum, that I get prompts from as well. So anyways, my whole point in all of this is that I predominantly get a lot of my ideas from prompts and then develop it from there, uh, take it from there. Basically, this is one of the few artworks that I did that was just inspired by my own visual head, <laughs> which is very rare. Uh, I typically don't get visuals in my head unless i see something or i read something for this particular one though it was I, i'm not sure what inspired me i think i woke up with a dream of it but then i completely forgot what the dream was all about but i remember the image being stuck in my head and i remember being very very much inclined to draw the image in my head um and so, yeah, I think this is one of the more original ideas that I have because it didn't really come from a prompt or from any other earlier projects that I've done or from any of the sketches that I made in my sketchbook because my sketchbook is a great place for inspiration as well. Um, this one just came straight from the head. And so, yeah, it's unique in those terms. Um the idea that I had basically was to have this astronaut person walk around in an astronaut costume because obviously we don't see astronauts in our daily walking lives. So I thought it would be an interesting composition to see this astronaut type of character just walking around, hanging out like it's any normal day and whatnot. And I thought it would make a cool idea until I started looking up references for this one and I realized it's not an original idea after all. There's this artist who I could not find now. I tried looking him up and i can't find him anymore um and so but i, I remember seeing the images because he did a series of it and it's basically the same exact photography series this guy's a photographer or some a camera per God, some camera person he's an artist who takes photographs photographer though um and he did a series on this very very subject that i'm describing some astronaut dude just hanging around or walking around with an astronaut costume and it was a very campy cheesy sort of you know photo series that i thought was very cool <laughs> and so you know i even before i 
started drawing it, I realized that the idea wasn't as original as I thought it was. But I went ahead and still did the illustration just simply because it was in my head. And I feel like I needed to get it out. And so I did. So yeah. But yeah, I thought it was funny that I thought I had an original idea only for me to realize that someone else has been doing the same exact subject that I kind of wanted to explore in my head. But at least I got this cool looking sketch out of it out of that idea so yeah um but yeah that's where the idea came from uh and whatnot and so now i think now would be a great time for me to talk about the process which the process was i did a quick sketch um of the scene and i love my quick sketch of the scene simply because that uh, simply because I, I didn't depend on 3D this time. I've been depending a lot on 3D to work out my lighting and my perspective issues right off the bat. Um, and it's a great tool for that. I, I love using 3D, especially if I'm working on a complicated compositions. But this time around, I just decided, hey, you know what? I'm just going to do just straight up sketching, drawing from Krita. And so that's what I did. I set up my perspective guides. Uh, I set up one vanishing point. There's pretty much just one vanishing point in the scene. I mean, the way I had pictured it is exactly the way I executed it. Uh, I knew that there was going to be some um, objects in a very, very far distant, in which, the, in which this case there was a city skyline of some form way back in the back. And, of course, this really, really unique architectural... Um, artwork structure of some sort which i don't even know what the idea behind that is i i knew that i just needed to have something intriguing and interesting object wise in the back and so that's why i put that there um it's like a flying fork or something and I, I don't know how to, be, how to even describe that structure but i knew i needed something there that would be viscerally arresting as much as the astronaut in the foreground um so yeah, that's why I put it there. Um, but yeah, I just set up, set up my perspective guides and kind of drew everything from there. Really, the only main object that was going to depend heavily on those perspective lines is the boardwalk that the two characters are sitting on. Uh, it's pretty obvious that they're sitting in some form of pier or something. Uh, and they're looking out into the sea. And way beyond them is, of course, the skyline. Um, so yeah but yeah very simple sketch uh i knew that the scene wasn't complicated in terms of uh architecture structures and whatnot so i just did a simple vanishing point uh one point vanishing point and then did my sketch based off of it um i drew the characters very very quickly uh, i didn't really spend a whole lot of time on them and there's a good reason why is because i'm going to come back and do a far more detailed sketch of them later on and then as soon as i did my sketch i uh did my coloring on a separate layer i basically take take my take the random mech brush that comes standard with krita put a hue setting on it and just lay down a bunch of colors um I use the color palette cinema or I use pal a palette that I got from the color palette cinema website uh, slash Instagram site um, and it basically limited me to like eight colors basically in that palette but using those eight colors I was able to derive a lot more colors if I turn on the random hue variation on my random mag brush which I did and then as soon as I lay down all the colors, you know, I kind of just pick specific spots that I wanted to be a certain particular color from those eight colors that I got. Um, and then after that, I just basically smudge everything and get this nice base paint <laughs> to work my details on. So you see me smudging things around. Uh, and then as soon as I get this base paint, I am slowly going to start my detailing process, which we will see in the next few minutes.
Okay, so uh, I think that would be a great time to pick up narration of what's going on. Um, Because quite a lot of things has happened (laughs) since I signed off. So the last thing that I mentioned before the music came on was I was basically smudging everything around to get a base paint. And then as soon as I got that base paint, I started detailing things. Uh, my detailing process is a three-step process. I delineate my edges, which means I make my edges sharper so that my shapes could read better. And I accentuate the shadows, which means I basically uh, darken the shadows a little bit if it needs some darkening. And then I add highlights. So I do this three-step process starting from the background all the way to the foreground. The photo, the composition, the artwork is so simple uh, in its nature that the detailing process of the background went by real quick. I basically my key selected the sky and then detailed the sky very quick. Um, my key selected the city in the background, and I basically did the same thing where I kind of just add added a little bit more colors on the edges so that it reads sharper and then I came back with a color dodge to just kind of add all the highlights just to kind of indicate that it's being lit from above because I pretty much wanted the scene to be lit from straight above like it's a noontime scene I mean you can see from all the shadows it's the shadows are just pretty much just straight down um, it's not being cast um, like it's a three o'clock shadow or a ten o'clock shadow so you know it's not morning or afternoon it's pretty much noon time um and then the pier slash boardwalk that the two characters are on are very very simple i mean i just basically needed to create slots of wood and so yeah um a lot of the things was taken care of when i did the base paint if i do it right if i do it well i could get away with a very nice background that looks detailed but it's actually very very fastly and loosely detailed so um so yeah uh the background went by real fast real quick i'm really happy with the background the foreground though is a little bit more interesting because obviously as soon as i smudge all the characters i decided you know what i'm gonna add a little bit more to this by actually creating a really nice detailed sketch uh, sometimes i do this sometimes i just go straight to detailing it really depends on the form if the form's too fuzzy and it's hard to read then i would go back and come in with more details which is what i did for this two particular characters and i'm really glad because the girl was hardly readable before you can't really tell what's going on with the girl but the moment that i sketch her out it her pose slash demeanor slash character in itself became more readable Uh, my first initial sketch her face was turned away from the audience this time around you could see her side profile and so you could see parts of her expression so obviously that made her far more interesting um and then the astronaut had a lot more details put in on him compared to the way it was before so that was really cool that i detailed him that way and so as soon as i did my detailed sketch i went ahead and recolored it um sometimes i do this sometimes i don't i love the colors that i chose for the girl because it really popped her out i really played the contrast on the warm versus the cool desaturated colors that is predominant in the scene so the girl is very saturated and very very warm and then everything else is desaturated slash cool except for the boardwalk Uh, obviously that boardwalk is neutral colors so so yeah i chose those colors and then now i'm smudging things around and then i'm gonna go back and read details the whole scene which it's gonna go by real quick because a lot of the information is already on there um there's already lighting information there's already form there's already perspective um so yeah i'm basically just gonna go back and just kind of tighten things up so yeah this illustration for the most part is close to being finished 
but I love the theme of it, you know? I mean, well, hey, I really love the illustration simply because it is one of the more original ones that came out from my head without being prompted by a prompt. So that was cool in of itself. I, you know, do pursue my own original ideas, especially if I sketch things out randomly on my sketchbook. That's where a lot of my original ideas came from instead of it just being randomly from an image in my head this one was just straight up from an image in my head so that was very very interesting um i love what came out of it um so that's one thing i love about it and i really really love the composition and the ease of which it was created so the composition is very simple but it's very effective um it has again I i've been doing this whole narrative thing right like Every single time I get a prompt, I always try to make a narrative scene out of it. Like it's some scene from a movie or from a book, you know, that you could read or watch and whatnot. And so that's kind of been like my approach with artwork. And so with this particular one, you kind of feel like there is some form of story that's going on rather than it's just an image, you know, like what is going on? Are they on a date? Are they friends? Why is the guy wrapped up in an astronaut outfit? Is it a guy? Is it even human? Could it be an alien life form? And this girl is Earth's ambassador of some sort showing this alien around in this world that we have. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the narrative is. You know, I'm not sure what the story is, but it's interesting that it's there. And that's what I love about it is that there's this narrative aspect to this particular illustration that I created. And then again, the execution of it was very, very easy, you know, because all of the detailing pretty much happened right in the middle. Everything else around it was like so easy. Everything, like pretty much two thirds of the photo is so far out into the horizon that I could just pretty much leave it loose and whatnot. And I wouldn't have to detail it a whole lot. Um, and then of course, uh, the, the board block was very simple. So yeah. Uh, in terms of detailing it, it was just one of the ones that was just very easily, easily detailed. So I really, really love it. And I love that girl's hair. <laughs> I love how, and this is the reason why I throw a bunch of random colors and then smudge them around. Because sometimes when you smudge colors, you get this really cool, interesting color combination, such as the case in the girl's hair. The girl has purples and blues and oranges and just all this really cool colors that you're like well what's going on with her hair you know um so yeah that's what i like best about smudging this smudging technique that i do where i just throw a bunch of random colors at first i don't worry so much about what colors i'm putting down what i'm worried about is the color harmony and the values that's what's important for me so, you know, that's the reason why I love color palette cinema because you're just stuck with eight colors. And so basically with those eight colors, I just choose where they go. Okay, so color number one goes in this section, color number two goes in that section, so on and so forth. And that's what I typically do when I do my coloring. And then as soon as I do that, then I would come in with the multiply and the color dodge brush just to kind of darken some areas and give them some shadows and lighten some areas. And then I smudge everything around just to get my base paint. And then when they get that base paint, things just end up with really cool colors. Uh, the astronaut is a great example of it too, you know? I didn't expect the brown. I didn't expect the browns on the astronaut at all, but they ended up there uh, just because of the random mag brush set with a different hue variation on it. So yeah, I really do like my smudging technique just because you get this really odd, weird color combinations that you, I don't plan out for. Now, obviously, the other caveat to that is that you know, it's really cool if it gives me really cool color mixes but sometimes the color mix can be just very very off the wall as well so you know i do have to watch out for it but you know it's a nice little technique that i've been messing around with 
slash experimenting with. And so that's it. That's the end of this video. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from it. I will catch you guys next year. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Happy New Year. Good night. Thank you.